what she wrote yesterday, I utterly condemn. And um, I said uh, we would tear out anti-Semitism by its roots. I meant it, and that's why we acted so swiftly yesterday. Um, I think it's a mark of how far the Labour Party has changed that we acted so swiftly and that we take it so seriously. But I condemn what she said. Uh, but I'm specifically saying, is it anti-Semitic what she wrote yesterday, in your view? I condemn what she said. There's obviously an investigation. There's an investigation going on now. But look, I don't think anybody can doubt uh, the change in the Labour Party when you see that swifter action um, and our absolute commitment to zero tolerance. I mean, the editor of the Jewish Chronicle says that it takes a lot to surprise me when it comes to anti-Semitism, but for sheer of malice, it's hard to think of a worse example than Mrs. Adams was yesterday. It's a really straightforward question. You've seen the words. You've read them. In your view, what Diana Adams wrote yesterday, anti-Semitic or not? In my view, what she said was uh, to be condemned. It was anti-Semitic. Uh, it's absolutely right that we acted as swiftly as we did. That's the change that you've seen in the Labour Party. But do I condemn what she said? I absolutely condemn what she said. Um, do I want to show the Labour Party takes this seriously and acts very quickly? Yes, I do. And that's why we acted as swiftly as we did yesterday. So if you say you've got a zero tolerance approach to all of this, and you just said it is anti-Semitic. Surely she cannot stand the Labour candidate of the next election. Well, as you know, there's an investigation going on um, at what, the moment. What reason, uh, uh, there's an investigation going on at the moment. That's the right thing. The whip has been suspended. Uh, that was done very, very swiftly. And I have condemned what she said, along with many other people. Well, what's the purpose of the investigation? And you read a word. You judged it as anti-Semitic. What's this investigation to find out she's apologised? Surely she cannot stand as a Labour candidate if you've got a genuine zero tolerance approach. I think everybody understands that there has to be an investigation in every case and nobody has said to me there shouldn't be an investigation. What they want to see is a Labour Party that demonstrates um, by its actions that it's changed, um, that it does have zero tolerance and that's why we acted as quickly as we did yesterday. Okay, just very finally on this, how disappointed are you that yet again here we are today talking about anti-Semitism, racism within the Labour Party? Of course I'm disappointed. We should be talking about the cost of living today. There are many people today who can't afford the basic food they need or their energy bills. That's what we should be talking about. So of course I'm disappointed uh, that we're talking about anti-Semitism. Uh, let's talk about the cost of living crisis. Uh, I read your press release this morning that talked about COVID and talked about uh, the, uh, uh, sorry, the war in Ukraine having an effect on uh, inflation. You say that's not unique to the UK. Well, why would you talk about Brexit, which is a union? and may well be leading to Britain's economic troubles. Well, as you will have seen in the press release we put out today, we did talk about Brexit. We said, look, there's a cost of living crisis. Um, it's worse in this country than other countries, and the government needs to account for that. 40% um, on essential items is the rate of inflation. That's impossible for many, many families. In order to deal with that, we need to get to grips with the energy crisis, have um, a real plan, a labour plan for energy to bring those bills down. But also, we need a better relationship with the EU to get a better Brexit deal. Um, and the sooner that we're able to bring about the change that we need in this country, then the better for the millions of families who today will be watching this and knowing that they're really, really struggling to make ends meet. Just two final quick questions. Uh, one on the FFB leader, who the Prime Minister is meeting later on today. Uh, are you keen to meet uh, the new SNP leader, the new Scotland First Minister? Well, I'll meet any political leader. Um, it's very important that we do meet political leaders. Um, I have to say that um, the SNP is, I think, finally being held to account for its awful record in government. Um, and they're collapsing in on themselves. So um, I'll be interested to know how the meeting with the Prime Minister goes later on today. But at a basic level, of course, we should speak to all political leaders. Uh, just very finally, uh, Len Goodman has died this morning. So what of a national president? Yeah, real sadness, I think, across uh, the country. Uh, Mr. Strictly, in many respects, and, you know, there in our living room for a very, very long time on a Saturday night, I think across the country, there will be a genuine and heartfelt sadness at uh, this turn of events. Very serious situation in Sudan. I, I mean, the question is, I mean, I, I, even the government minister said, I think, this morning that the government's slightly struggling to get potentially thousands of British nationals out of there. I mean, the government probably should have seen this, should have acted much earlier on this. Let me first acknowledge it's a really difficult and fast-moving situation that the government is contending with. Uh, and let me pay tribute to those, including our troops, who have managed to get our diplomats 
out in a very difficult um, exercise. Now, of course, there's deep concern about those that are still there and in fear and real concern about what's going to happen to them. Um, I do want the government to do everything it can at pace uh, to help them um, get out of that difficult situation. I do acknowledge it's a very, very difficult and fast-moving situation. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Great.